has been a year full of a lot of challenges and a lot of stress. As students head back to class, we'll show you what one school district is doing to support their teachers. Plus, the efforts underway at ASU to help people jumpstart their careers by learning new skills online. And later this half hour on Break It Down, the absence of black coaches in the NFL. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Brianna Alexander. And I'm Nick Shesky. Thank you for joining us. Governor Ducey's executive order requiring schools to go back to in-person begins today. And as many districts are heading back to class, one is dealing with some controversy. A billboard urging the Tempe Union High School District to open back up had some parents upset, feeling it called out teachers unnecessarily. Cronkite News reporter Sedona Meadows spoke with some of the parents. Sedona? One group of parents put up the money for the billboard, calling for teachers to return to the classroom. Another group responded, working together to make sure teachers feel welcomed as they return to campus today. This has been a year full of a lot of challenges and a lot of stress, and what I've seen is a lot of disrespect. And last month, there was a billboard that was posted um, towards T Tempe Union High School District, stating that the district was failing our students. And our district has definitely followed the science and the metrics, but they are not failing our students. Amanda Steele, a parent in the Tempe Union High School District, upset by the billboard, decided to organize an event to welcome back educators. And Danielle Pollitt, a Mountain Point High School parent, took charge in gathering volunteers for her school. We've got giant appreciation banners to be put up at every school site and at the district office. Um, and we're going to be chalking up the sidewalks and hanging poster boards. Sean Bowie, a state senator in District 18, came back to his alma mater to leave messages of support. Well, it's been a really tough year for everybody. It's been a really tough year for our students. It's also been a really tough year for our teachers and our educators. So we just want to let them know that we appreciate all the hard work they've done uh, working from home. I think educators and our school staffs are feeling a lot of pressure right now. And it makes me really sad as a parent and a lover of teachers to know that they're under so much stress in order to make our lives as parents a little bit easier. Steele, Paulette, and Bowie, along with other supporters, hope to bring a level of comfort for educators as they come back to campus. I just really think that they need to know that they are loved and they are appreciated, and that's what this was. This was, a po this was a passion project filled with love. Teachers and staff within the Tempe Union High School District returned to their schools today with messages of hope and support from the floors to the walls and throughout the community. In the studio, Sedona Meadows, Cronkite News. Some good news for Arizona. The state is reporting 638 new COVID-19 cases with zero deaths. This marks the third day in a row with less than 1,000 cases. The number of infections is falling across the nation as more people are getting vaccinated. If the momentum keeps going, Dr. Anthony Fauci says the country may see relaxed guidelines in time for Independence Day fireworks. If by the time we get to the 4th of July, with the rollout of the vaccines, we get the level of infection so low, I'm not going to be able to tell you exactly what the specific guidelines of the CDC are, but I can tell you for sure they will be much more liberal than they are right now about what you can do. Fauci's comments comes nearly a week after the CDC released new guidance saying people fully vaccinated against COVID-19 can safely visit with other vaccinated people. After a year, air travel is bouncing back. 5.2 million people have flown since Thursday, marking the highest number of flyers in any four-day period since March 15th of 2020. TSA says it screened more than 1.3 million people Sunday alone. Airlines hope this signifies the start of a comeback, especially after the industry just received $40 billion in new stimulus money. However, health officials worry that increased spring break travel could lead to a spike in new COVID infections. Nurses have been on the front lines of the pandemic since March. Cronkite News reporter Mitchell Zimmerman explains how nurses of color in particular are more likely to contract COVID-19. According to National Nurses United, Filipino nurses are much more likely to contract COVID-19 and die from the virus than any other minority nursing group. 
Jennifer Samara is a Filipino registered nurse for a medical surgical unit at a hospital in the valley. I was floated one time in a COVID floor wherein we don't know where to get the yellow gown anymore. She's talking about the extra gowns nurses wear when treating patients with COVID-19. My husband and I are both nurses, so there is higher, higher risk when I, whenever we come home. According to National Nurses United, Filipino nurses make up 30.1% of all COVID-related deaths. This number is significantly higher than the amount of Filipino nurses in the workforce, which stands at 4%. Arlinda Singaraja, the president of the Philippine Nurses Association of Arizona, says she knows several nurses that have contracted COVID-19. For her, it's become personal. We're all spread out throughout the different um, hospitals. So when one nurse is affected with COVID, we are all affected. A small gathering, just just the family. But then, then suddenly we, we got symptoms. Overall, nurses of color make up over half of the COVID-related deaths compared to just comprising 24.1% of the workforce. Singaraja delivered food to Samara while her family was recovering from COVID-19. Always asking if there's seeing something that I need or my family. She's so amazing. Singaraja has created an anonymous email to help those in need. And you could send me an email, whether you wanted prayers, you wanted help with grocery shopping. Both Singaraja and Samara have given back to the community since March. Samara has made over 1,700 masks. The surgical cap for, for since the beginning of the COVID, and I do it for free. The Philippine Nurses Association of Arizona aims to utilize professional leadership, mentorship, and clinical expertise with the purpose of promoting the advancement and betterment of Filipino-American nursing practice and fostering positive image in the community. In the studio, Mitchell Zimmerman, Cronkite News. A new CNN poll shows more than 25% of Americans haven't gotten the vaccine and don't intend to. That's why the Biden administration is planning to launch a COVID-19 vaccine promotion campaign in the coming weeks. It's aimed at Americans who are hesitant to get immunized. A marketing executive close to the project says that government is spending $250 million. Most of the money will be used to buy advertising on television, radio, billboards, print and digital media. The campaign will also include a podcast hosted by a well-known person outside of the government. Work on the advertising project started last fall, but the Biden administration has been waiting to launch the education campaign until there was an increase in vaccine supply. Health officials say about 80% of Americans need to be vaccinated to keep the virus from spreading. It was a colder than usual weekend across Arizona, the temps warming back up a little bit today, but another storm system is moving in. So could rain ruin our luck this St. Patty's Day? Tina Giuliano is joining us now with a look at the forecast. Tina? Yeah, we're we're seeing some colder temperatures from this past weekend kind of flow into the beginning of this week, but the rest of the week and the beginning of next week is looking pretty good. Let's take a look at how the next couple of days are going to go. So we did see right here um, some snow, some rain um, and some clouds kind of staying with us until Thursday. But our uh, don't worry, the weekend is looking pretty good, as you'll see here in a minute. This is the big picture, kind of a little bit showing you what is going on. The 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 um temperatures are going to stay pretty much the same but we are going to see um that uh system kind of flow through here but our evening is looking pretty nice 64 degrees uh, by 10 p.m with clear skies uh you will need to keep that jacket handy but um you'll be able to to get rid of the jacket by thursday because look right there 82 degrees and even going to friday and saturday will be in the in the mid to high 80s and saturday 84 degrees. I mean, if that's not kayaking weather, I don't know what is. So now you know what I'm doing on Saturday. Um, going into our work week here, though, even on Sunday, 74, Monday, 75, we have clear, sunny skies uh, with a little bit of clouds um, to look forward th to in our next couple of days. In the Weather Center, Tina Giuliano, Cronkite News. Want to learn some new skills? A new partnership here at ASU allows anyone to get a certificate in certain areas, all online. Julia Sandor explains the new program works. This partnership targets adult learners and those who are ready to jumpstart their careers. 
and it's going to help expand access in advanced skills programs. Chegg, an online learning platform for students in Arizona State University, are using a career accelerator titled Thinkful. Most universities are invite-only spaces where students apply to join their community and must be eligible to get in. Learning Enterprise at ASU is making education available to anyone who wants to learn. In order for them to find a place for people to get a kickstart in their careers, they needed a partner. We partnered up with Chegg and Thinkful because they have best-in-class boot camps that help people get jobs now, help them get started with uh, the tools they need to bring security to their families, to get a head start in the careers they might want in the future. The program is designed to help people get a job now. ASU will help them on their path and give them a career trajectory to help them find opportunities. Chegg is offering many different programs for adult learners. We had bought a, a company called Thinkful in 2019, which is one of, if not the best providers of that you know skills acceleration six month learn everything you need to do to be a coder be a data scientist be a digital marketer has the best outcomes in the industry it, arizona has um is increasing in terms of the tech market jobs that they have available for candidates um 40 faster than the rest of the u.s so it definitely means that this type of innovation is happening right there locally quite a bit the programs range in length as well and there are options to either do that in kind of intensive work 50 hours a week. This is, you know, a full-time job essentially that you're going to do, or there are programs that take more like seven to nine months that are 20 hours a week. It's more flexible. You take it when you have the time to do that. You can find more information about all the different programs at bootcamp.asu.edu. In the broadcast center, Julia Sandor, Cronkite News. I'm Kelsey Clacy. After the break, I'll have your Cronkite Sports Report. Is the new WNBA logo Phoenix's favorite star? We'll tell you after the break. I think he was a terrific father sometimes. I think that he was a loving husband sometimes. I think he was like so many people, except this enormous talent. Hemingway is very complicated. I hate the myth of Hemingway. It obscures the man, and the man is much more interesting than the myth. Coming in April to Arizona PBS. Here we go, lights up. Whoa. As artists, we conduct our educations in public. You can never know whether it's going to be a success. One just has to risk it. It's you and the work and the place. It's a very particular relationship. Here's our lens. Tell us what you think. Friday night at 9 on Arizona PBS. Welcome back, I'm Kelsey Clacy with your Cronkite Sports Report. NASCAR made its annual spring visit to the Valley this weekend and the action did not disappoint. Former series champion and the driver of the number 19, Martin Truex Jr., took the checkers for his first win at Phoenix Raceway. The race was also a homecoming for Valley native and Daytona 500 winner Michael McDowell, who finished 23rd. Defending winner Chase Elliott finished fifth. The race hosted around 10,000 fans with Truex pointing out how much he appreciated the extra energy. It was definitely fun. It was definitely a good change oh, to see him. And, um, you know, to hear the cheers at the race and the excitement about the race was fun as well. So um, hopefully, um, you know, every week we can have more and more people. And also on Sunday, Grand Canyon University basketball made the NCAA tournament for the first time in school history. The 15th seed in the West will face second seeded Iowa in the first round. The Western Athletic Conference champions play Saturday at 3.25 p.m. And sticking with basketball, the WNBA announced a new logo for their 25th anniversary season. The logo features a silhouette, which many on social media have been comparing to Mercury star Diana Taurasi. The league says it's not based on any individual player, 
However, Mercury fans can see their icon in the flesh soon, with the schedule expected to be released in the near future. Speaking of Tarasi, many people in Phoenix call her the GOAT, a phrase that always seems to stir up a debate among sports fans. But Cronkite News reporter Zach Moore got to hear why this debate is seemingly over. Diana Taurasi is entering her 17th season with the Phoenix Mercury, and while she continues to prove that age is just a number, the impact that she has made for the WNBA is one that she takes great pride in. We in Phoenix do it better than anyone else as far as having initiatives and things that are important to us as players um, to get across to the community. And, uh, and you see that when you come to the game. Diana Taurasi, who many call the GOAT, has certainly made an impact in her 17 years in Phoenix, but nothing speaks louder than her resume. She is, for most fans, um, the entirety of, of their Mercury fanhood. And not just the fans, but the athletes. Tarasi has worked with the community through youth basketball camps during her time in the WNBA. It made an impact for one local athlete at Desert Vista who spoke about the effect Tarasi has had on her and her teammates. Someone with a great leadership role that she has, um, like kind of living your dreams and showing you that you can do that you can do it, you can accomplish what you want. The Mercury came up with the idea to create a shirt that would pay homage to Tarasi's legacy. It's all a part of the WNBA's effort to continue creating opportunities for young women. In a lot of ways, reflects what, what the people want. Um, and uh, There's a hunger for that, there's an appetite for that, and I think that uh, that's only going to get bigger and better. For now, her primary focus? To bring another championship to the city of Phoenix. In Chandler, Zach Moore, Cronkite News. Tarasi is the WNBA's all-time leading scorer. This, among many other accolades, are featured on the iconic t-shirt that is popular among fans and sold on the official Phoenix Mercury team website. That does it for today's Cronkite Sports Report. Back to you, Brianna and Nick. And that's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.